Hey ho, hello, Spamet the Over 2 here with chapter 10 and 11 of Allegrezza. And my square, and my, uh, and my chair is really squeaky. Um, yes, Concerto 10 e 11. Yeah, that's 11. 11. Um, this cha- I read sort of this because obviously the last chapter nodded at something. Um, but this has like like just one line of like nodding to um stuff, you know what people do. I I never mind. It just it nods at sort of a erotic sort of thing, but it's not bad. It's it's still cute on a cute level, but it's not completely clean minded. It's just one line. That's it. Just careful for that. I'm just gonna read it seriously across. I'm not even gonna like pause or anything. So here here we go. Concerto dieci. Sunlight finally drifted through the window. It smelt the dust that curled and flurled, flurry in the new morning breeze, like the blizzards seen in the snow globe. It crawled its way across the floor as time rolled on. Finally, all adding upon a pair of ponies asleep on the sofa, in one another's embrace. The sun raised Octavia from her uncharacteristically late slumber. She shifted herself slightly as she woke, reworking her muscles that had lain comfortably unused for the night. Her eyelids flickered open to see the pillow of electric blue hair she had fallen asleep on on that night. The night before came rushing back, Octavia's cheeks lighting up as she recalled some of the events that had occurred last night. It had, perhaps, gotten a little bit out of hoof, the worrying part being there was no haze of alcohol to blame this time. She toyed with Vinyl's mane as she shifted lightly into a more comfortable position again behind Vinyl. Octavia found herself rewrapping her forelegs around Vinyl's, still very much unconscious form. Vinyl was highly unlikely to get up anytime soon, so Octavia simply didn't feel the need to either that morning. She closed her eyes, nuzzling to Vinyl's mane, but still unable to get back to sleep. It was always the case for Octavia. She was something of an early bird, so once she was awake, she couldn't sleep until the night returned again. However, today she had no pressing engagements, no concerts or rehearsals to play. She had the day free to do whatever she wanted to do, and currently, that was enjoying the slow tide of Vinyl's breathing. Of course, this whole situation presented issues. Issues that flurled and swarmed in Octavia's mind like a flock of bats. Every up had it down. Octavia and Vinyl had found happiness together out of the view of other ponies. But what about when they stepped into the light of Equestria together? How would the other ponies react to their love? Love. It was such an alien and strange concept. It barely seemed like a pony mine had thought up had thought it up at all. Trying to understand what she felt, understand what had drawn her towards Vinyl, was like trying to write a poem with her hooves. It was right there, dancing in her face and cutting off her breath. Yet she couldn't understand why it was there. What it aimed to achieve. She wondered if Vinyl felt this uncertain. She doubted it. Vinyl had such a clear-cut, black-and-white view of the world. Not scared to say what she felt, whereas Octavia hid herself behind a veil of decorum and circumstance. It was removing that veil that worried her now having the full light of reality unleash upon her eyes. Dreams and nightmares flickered through her thoughts. She could only remember what happened to Lyra. She had went from Octavia's level of respect skill to nothing in one night, the night she publicly announced her plans to marry another mayor. High society is often called classical for a reason. It holds to all the ways in a vice grip, tighter than one holds to, it, to its money in. Old-fashioned decaying even. It was it was funny how meeting vinyl made Octavia realize that sometimes the old ways really weren't better, and they had been surpassed. 
Philly Philly would be something that would give Octavia grief, no doubt. But if it was a day of grief to earn a minute of peace with vinyl, like the moment she was currently experiencing, well, that was more than acceptable. She supposed she would have to fight for her love. If it was worth having, it was worth fighting for. What she hadn't realized, and what is often the trap of musicians, is that she had subconsciously been muttering her thoughts into Vinyl's ear. It was common for a musician who had spent her career translating thought into sound to occasionally forget to turn it off, but Octavia finally noticed her error when Vinyl shifted around to look into her eye, grinning sheepishly with lids still half-closed. You know, I don't normally get ponies muttering Cheryl Cole in my ear to wake me up, but your singing's much better than hers, at least. Octavia sputtered. She had somewhat been hoping for a moment longer with her thoughts. Not that the interruption was something she vilified. Cheryl, who? Wow, you really don't keep up with today with the current artist, do you? If she's current... She's not an artist. Vinyl chuckled, raising a hoof to the painting above them. I suppose old art, the painting there is, then. It was ironic, and a good idea at the time. What about last night? Vinyl turned to her back to Octavia, eyes surprisingly alert and serious. Was that a good idea at the time? Are you implying I might be the kind to invite Phillies to my home? Take advantage of them, then set them loose in the next morning. Vinyl smiled. I don't want to be the latest in the long chain, Octavia. I'm sure there's many fillies after your heart. Not as many as you think. I suppose they all know I'm out of their league. I guess none of them are as dumb as me to try to take a hoof at Lady Octavia Philharmonica. By the way, what's with the ni- Oh, Celestia, don't you start. You talk too much already, Vinyl. Octavia leaned across the hoof full of inches, pecking vinyl on the muzzle. You need to stop running that tongue of yours around. Oh, wow, you weren't saying that last night. Vinyl's grin grew with the shades of pink on Octavia's cheeks. You haven't got a taxi waiting for me out there, have you? I'm feeling all unloved again. Octavia groaned, blending it through her staccato burst of giggles. Come here, then. Octavia will give you a hug. So we're sticking with Octi. Only in private. You know what, Octi? I'm really glad of something last night. Yes? Octavia kept up the embrace, but felt her body tense as she waited for Vinyl's reaction to the night before, what she felt and believed about their newfound relationship. I'm really glad you don't have a tuba. I suppose I could hardly have expected an emotionally searching evaluation of last night, then. Ah, come on. When was I ever big with emotions and stuff? True. Octavia shifted, causing her stomach to quake. It was far later than usual at breakfast time. Maybe she should break away from Vinyl for a moment to gather up some food. Are you hungry, Vinyl? Sorta. Got any cheer, Leos? No. Zico Pops? No. Scoot a bit. I have pancakes. What pancakes do? Only if they're the big flat pancakes. Not those little fat dumpy ones. Octavia groaned. Yes, yes. I will make you some crepes. You'll just need to get off me first. Make me. As you wish. Octavia braced herself against the sofa's back pushing vinyl onto the floor. She casually stepped over her before going to the kitchen to prepare, to prepare the pancakes. It took vinyl a minute or two to realize what had happened before she regathered herself, her tangled pile of limbs, and got back onto her hooves. She trotted over to the kitchen, peeking her head through the doorway. That was plain rude, Octi. I never got into this relationship to be pushed around. Are you going to help me make the pancake batter then? No, I'll be in the sitting room, waiting for my apology pancakes. Octavia chuckled, pouring the first lump of batter into the pan, before adding a healthy dose of syrup to the mix. Of course, I'll bring them through. Wow, Octi, cooking for me and sleeping with me? 
You're the perfect wife. The sauce pound did not hit Vinyl, however, as she had already ducked behind the doorway before starting her sentence. She reappeared, grinning, in time to get the egg whisk to the snout. She covered her injured face with a hoof, vainly trying to rub away the pain. Hey, it's not sex, it's says I'm the mayor too. Still, we're not getting married. At least, not so I can be your slave. I'm the one in charge here anyway. And why is that? Because, Vinyl dearest, I'm the one closest to the knife block. Vinyl retreated back into the sitting room, awaiting her pancake delivery. Her stomach growled at her just grab something else as quickly as possible. She felt that she would have to wait to get to know Octavia a little bit more thoroughly before she could undertake the liberty of raiding her fridge, especially when she was in the process of cooking her some pancakes. At least Octavia had a fairly distant sound system set up. Vinyl drooled over the pony near a record spinner gently stroking the pony sonic speakers with a tentative hoof. She used these for classical music? They must have obliterated her precious little mane whenever she turned them on. Naturally, Vinyl found herself flipping one of Octavia's less highbrow records onto the deck and excitedly slamming the power button when expectant glee. The record spun, the display glittering the faint aura of magic as it counted the tracks but barely a whisper thrummed from the speakers. Vanna put a tentative ear to the bass drivers with extreme wariness. Not even the slightest purr emanated, though the tweeters were also fairly silent. It was worth noting after several years of nightclubbing and heavy dubstep, Vano's ears were far less capable than Ophelia of her own age from the last generation. Still, Philly's the latest generation spent all their time sewing and feeding bunnies. Vana was more willing to sacrifice her top-end hearing for some throbbing bass. Then again, she would have put it past Octavia to keep up the knitting. Probably socks, worryingly. She spun the volume knob, tapped the radio tuner on, and searched through the fizzle, static, and white noise for something worth listening to. Coherent noise began to form as she spun it up, forming, forming into a radio show as she tweaked the tuning. Good morning, Equestria. The sun is up and so are you. You're listening to KCOLT, and it's time for the vi Vinyls violently spun the tuning knob into a higher frequency. She didn't much like a radio show about talking. What well, pony listened to that? Real music had to be higher frequencies. Once more, static became sound, and a noise fizzled away into a light play of some old-school jazz. Not bad, better than most of the stuff she'd find elsewhere. Vinyl delicately turned up while the bass was dumbing down with the treble. Much better. The music faded away, replaced by an enthusiastically vocal radio presenter. Thanks for listening, Phillies! This is three cold. Wahoo! And you're listening. The sound disappeared as Vinyl slammed the tuner, radio tuner off. It was a dying format these days anyway. Well, with the horn music downloads taking off so well, she grabbed the first record she could find, dropped it onto the deck, and spun the vinyl. Maxed out the bass before turning the treble into a bare minimum. Marching away, she planted herself on the couch. The music began, thrumming powerful bass with only the barest of actual instruments. Just like Celestia intended, vinyl thought. She was surprised how good a Moke's cart sounded with the maximum bass. Maybe she'd had to grab a couple of his albums when she headed home. It was then that she noticed Octavia trot into the door. Two plates of pancakes balanced delicately on her hooves. She acquired the source of an earthquake-like blast waves. Her own sound system. Panicking, she dropped the plates onto the coffee table before dashing over to a pony near a record player. She scanned the knobs, every sitting, out of place. Completely wrong and had taken her months of careful refinement to acquire the optimum listening conditions for Beethoven's work, emphasizing the string instruments at the top, while deferring to the double bass and cellos near the bottom. All of that picked up was a cast out of the window of the white unicorn bulldozing over her way to the pile of pancakes levitating before her. Vano raised another forkful of syrupy, doughy goodness to her lips before she noticed Octavia glaring at her from across the room. 
She carefully ate the pancake fragment before delicately placing the plate on the table just in case she needed to run. Octavia's left eye twitched in a similar manner how a crazed gun pony trigger hoof would twitch. She was completely wordless as she subconsciously tried to fix the system with a stray hoof. Her voice came in a passive, aggressive growl that would have put Vinyl's hair on end if the gel wasn't already doing the job for her. What did you do to my record player? Damn! No, okay. <laughs> Whoops. Already in a fight. Jeez. Jeez. And it was going so well. Uh, fine. Oh, yeah, by the way, on that last reading, um, I mean, it actually wasn't completely my fault that, that the video was long. Well, actually, it... In the end, it actually is, because I didn't notice that chapter 8 was not 2,000, but 2,900 words, which is just as big as a 3,000 word, which is 20 minutes by itself, which is just as long as a normal reading should be. So, if you really don't like, because I hear people don't like long, long videos, and that was like 40, well... Besides the ending, I guess. But I hope you did stay for the ending. Anyway. Here's Concerto Undici. Chapter 11. Concerto doesn't mean chapter. It just says concerto. Which means concerto. Which means concert. Which means... You get the idea. The short walk to Octavia's rehearsal. Passed in something akin to an awkward, heated silence. Octavia had made it quite vocally known exactly how difficult it had been to recalibrate her sound system to her usual specification. It was around the moment when Vinyl suggested that her modification had improved the sound of the system that Octavia almost felt like throwing one of the pony sonic speakers at her. Vinyl had left Octavia to it. After eating the pancakes, making something up about a DJing gig, and exiting stage left as rapidly as possible while Octavia was still in one of her moods. At this moment in time, the tension was still persisting between them as they charted down the road, and Vinyl found herself wanting to break the incandescent silence between them. So, you fix it okay? Well, of course I fixed it in the end. What you failed to anticipate is the hour and a half it took to do so. I had listened to Beethoven's Seventh Symphony five times before I could prevent the double bass from overriding the violins. Vinyl scratched her head, narrowly avoiding falling to Octavia as she tried to keep up with Octavia's determined pace on three hooves. Ah, uh, well, at least it's all fixed now. I won't touch it again. You're right. You won't if you know it's healthy for you. Oh, then fighting words. I prefer precautionary warnings alluding to bodily harm. Them's complicated words. Octavia trotted ahead, practically breaking into a canter, as though she fueled by nothing more than the sheer kinetic power of her indignation. How can you even trot in another pony's home and toy with their belongings as though you own the place? I preferred you the night before, then. You talked less. Likewise. Thankfully, Octavia's huffy attitude only got the opportunity to last her another moment before they finally reached her destination, at her breakneck speed of power trotting. Unlike the previous grand hall that she auditioned at, this was a more sober location for the rehearsals. In lieu of gothic architecture and eerie peg oils looming out of the mansory, it had a shimmering, slightly frosty glass front across the building, with a delicate and thin network of steel beams stretching out across its surface like a web. Vinyl decided to start making amends by opening the door for Octavia, receiving a passive, aggressive snore before she entered into the atrium. The room was light and airy, almost like the Cloudsdale Parasitium itself. Sunlight filtered through the glass front, the time of day allowing a full power beam through the glass, scattering past the steelwork and leaving a blurred and faded mirror of metal framework in the interior. It was carpeted in a fashionable manner, too, 
with a sleek, polished desk scrolled by a sleek, polished receptionist taking the center stage. Octavia cleared her throat slightly before opening her mouth to request directions. Hoof Zimmer had simply given her the address, no real indication of what room in this fairly sizable building she needed to attend the rehearsal in. The receptionist cut her off before Octavia's lips had even parted, not even looking up as she concentrated her magic and moving a hoof file back and forth across an already immaculate pedicure. Octavia was suddenly very conscious of how uncomfortable she must have looked by comparison. Vinyl, as always, carried all the composure and presentation of one of those old rag dolls Octavia had as a filly. She smiled for the briefest of seconds as she recalled her joy in receiving Classy Pants cello kit one day. It was what started her off in the path to playing one herself. The receptionist simply pointed a currently unpedicured hoof down a hallway, rattling off directions for stairs, corridors, left turns, right turns, gone too far, and magical fractures in time-space. Octavia nodded in a bewildered manner, remembering only the room number. Only she could just follow the signs on the walls. Octavia and Vinyl continued down the corridor, her confidence growing as she found her faith in the signs fulfilled. A thought suddenly crossed her mind as she noticed the passive, bemused smile on, on Vinyl's lips. Vinyl always seemed to wander around in a constant state of abject happiness, with that irritatingly endearing little grin. Octavia stopped dead in the hallway, Vinyl slowing down beside her. They were outside the required room, but Octavia felt a little housekeeping was in order, at least until she was ready to deal with it later. Vinyl. Vinyl noticed a slight trepidation that weighed down on Octavia's words. She hesitated a moment until she realized Octavia needed more coaxing to continue. Yeah, Octi? About... about us. I... I don't really want anyone to know just yet. Let's keep it to ourselves for now, if... if that's alright with you. If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. What are you so scared of, anyway? Octavia hesitated this time. Her eyes quivered uncertainly as she stared at the cream tiled floor as though searching for answers. I'm not entirely sure. I just know I'm not ready yet. Sorry. Hey, come here. You have, not, you have nothing to be sorry for. Vinyl wrapped her forelegs around Octavia. Awkward, giving the bulk of a cello case on her back, but had the desired effect on Octavia's tension. I'll keep it mum till you're ready, okay? Our secret. Octavia nodded, finally breaking the embrace. She halted, taking a deep breath before smiling, and nudging the door to the rehearsal theater open. Vinyl hasn't really admitted to that real reason she was so happy to keep their current relationship, if it could even be called that yet, on a down low was because she was equally frightened of the reactions as Octavia was. Sure, every pony experimented in college and university, but keeping it to the filly fooling afterwards wasn't exactly looked brightly upon even by the common pony. Coming out of the stable to a room full of stuffy classical musicians could only be a barn load worse. The rehearsal theater was very different from the audition theater, much in the way that the whole building differed to the former, modernism creeping into the age ways of the classical musicians. It was set out much like cinemas, like the cinemas vinyl had frequently back had frequented back in high school. Cushioned fold up chairs descend into a perfectly straight rows along a slope, ending in the stage itself. The ceiling was surprisingly high, the skeletal bones of the building's steel framework poking through, that, poking through it at some points. Hoofs was waiting at the stage, the rest of the quartet still setting up and tuning their respective instruments. Octavia turned to Vinyl, trying a half-hug before remembering the situation they were in. She smiled, embarrassment filling her cheeks with crimson, before she cantered away into the stage. Vinyl simply trotted slowly to the nearest row to the front she could find. What she hadn't expected was for Bonbon bon to comfortably find a seat a few to the right of her, before exclaiming on how much of a coincidence it was. Well, hello, Vinyl. Haven't seen you in a while. How are you and Octavia doing? Oh, 
We're good. As in separately good, you know? Not together. Bamba nodded, winking and tapping a hoof to her snout. Ah, uh, yeah. Don't worry. I get you. So, uh, if you don't mind me crying, how did you and Octavia celebrate her getting the position? As in the musical position? Not the s- Um, we just went back to hers. Chatting the- chatting a little, you know? Tea and biscuits. She gave me a private show, too. Bonbon's eyes lit up. She giggled away, before evolving to a witch-like crackle. Vina felt her cheeks grow hot as the cogs in her brain slowly worked out exactly what she had said, which couldn't elicit such jovial reaction. No, 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 no. I meant on the cello. A show on the cello, in private. Bamba nodded, shaking her tear from her eye with the tip of her hoof. But of course, Vinyl. I'm glad you two had fun, in a platonic and unromantic manner. Yeah, exactly what you said. They're starting the rehearsals now. Let me watch. Vina leaned forward, trying her best to concentrate on the quartet and the elderly pony leading them. As always, her eyes were drawn to the practically loosened expression of the mare next to her. For Celestia's sake, will you stop grinning at me like that? Octavia set the case on the stage, deftly flicking open the clips and unveiling the instrument within. The whole situation was much calmer now especially in contrast to her rage and nerves that night. Zimmer knew her skill and her proudness. She had nothing to prove this time. Instead, she simply had to learn the notes required for her. Learning was something that came relatively naturally for Octavia. Truly, any musician worth their, worth their salt lick was also a fast learner. Decoding notes, rhythm, and timbre at, the, at a speed ponies of other professions found it difficult to match. Octavia's own specialty was more than the art of learning and understanding a piece, looking beyond the notes and timing the emotion behind it, mimicking the composer's emotion and intent with each saw of her bow. If she were to try, she could most likely learn any instrument she wished to. It was simply a matter of preference and habit that she stayed loyal to her cello after all these years. It was a gift from her father, no less. After discovering her fascination with music, her parents piled her with instruments in hope of teasing her cutie mark from her. Xylophones were too cumbersome. A hoof was unable to play them in the light, delicate manner as they required. Piano, too rapid, working across vast spectrum of notes and keys to play her music was too much for her young and stunted filly fillyhood legs. No, it was the cello she finally settled on. It was awkward at first, difficult, as many instruments should be, but it was also an instrument of the utmost precision. An acute tilt of her bow could change the no tone and mood of the note entirely. She could command it with the slightest nudge or twitch at her will, playing music nearly effort effortlessly that made her parents weep in proud tears when they first heard it. She was so proud of that moment, she barely felt the heat on her flanks as her treble clef appeared. It became a routine, not in the dull manner that a lay pony would go through, working in an office and rolling in droves such as filing, filing reports and compiling spreadsheets, more like the greeting of a close relative after a hard day's work. The stalwart cello that relied on her for stability as much as she relied on it. As such, she rested herself against it, watching as Lyra and the others tuned and tweaked their instruments. She idly twirled at the tuning pegs, the cello, the cello already being mostly in tune, or she had departed for her home. It helped her take her mind away from the chaos Vinyl had wrecked on her home audio system. Hoves had distributed the music, each pony placing it upon their music stand. Octavia pursued over the notes. Soothed jazz, very suave. Not a style she was familiar with, but it could hardly be called an in intensive genre. The entire purpose of it was to lull the audience into a calm and contented demeanor. Perfect for our aristocratic members of the gala parties. No real need to dance, not even a reverse waltz. Simply a necessary music required to aid the various ponies in their small talk and mingling. The quartet, the quartet was fairly diverse. 
There was Octavia and Lyra taking the string department. A stallion with a blue coat and a trio of notes on his flank that currently holding his saxophone in a casual leaning stance, pouring over his music. The other pony was a near jet black coal, his mane and tail the purest pearl white. On his flank was a small segment of a piano, the white keys standing out from his coat while the black keys blended in flawlessly. Could easily be mistaken for teeth if the light was in, in such beneficial position. Turning her attention from the potential dentist pony, Octavia began to pr practice small segments of the notes. Hers was more involved, more involved though, along with Lyra's. The piano stayed in a melody that could almost be referred to as chilled, while the saxophone stayed at the low, jazzy notes that fitted the character of the instrument so well. It was the job of Lyra and Octavia to garnish the quartet, flavoring the otherwise mellow palette of, palette of the piece. She shot a look at Lyra, who seemed to have reached the same conclusion. Despite her constant jibes, Octavia knew Lyra was a potent musician. In fact, it could be argued that that was the reason she threw insults at Lyra in the first place. No classical musician made friends in their business, just rivals and doormats. Each nodded in perfectly timed synchronization, only a hoofful of meters apart, but still too far to engage in the labor of conversing with each other. Somewhat fortunately, Hoofs noticed a tense and icy blockade between the pair, and sundered in with a calm sentence. Miss Hotstrings and Miss Philharmonica, I recommend you two had better begin conversing if you are to align the tempos of your pieces. It would greatly help the composition as a whole. Lyra nodded first, sharply with a nervous vigor, before treading confidently over to Octavia, Lyra encased in a purple field of magic. Well, Octavia... It seems Mr. Zimmer has paired us up. I suppose we'll have to cooperate if we want to see our paychecks after all this is over. I imagine so. But please, lower the tone of your liar of yours this time. It's far too bright for this piece. Says the pony plays an instrument with a tone as low as her brow. It was but a simple request. However, I see nothing is simplified enough for you to understand. Vinyl watched the verbal slang match until Zimmer stepped in, demanding the pair to cooperate. Even at this distance, she recognized Octavia's annoyed face, little scrunched-up snout, and narrowed eyes she pulled whenever she had been bested. Vinyl loved trying to tease that face from her. It was her most adorable visage. Bonbon chuckled, leaning onto the row of, front, row of chairs in front as she peered onto the stage, watching Lyra and Octavia reluctantly practicing timing exercises they wouldn't have performed since kindergarten, most likely. Each would play a, sli a slightly faster, louder, or higher than the other, eliciting a small shake of the head from hoofs as he told them to start again. Bonbon bon chuckled, turning to Lyra. <laughs> My wife and your Philly friend sure do get along well. Vinyl cheeks hit it up. She barely managed to coherently sputter the words. But, uh, but... She's not my Philly friend, okay? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, huh? Seriously, you... You are the worst kind of pony. Bonbon bon relaxed the back of their chair, flicking only the briefest of challenging glances at Vinyl before speaking. You gotta admit, she look adorable in socks. Who, Octi? Nope. I was talking about Lyra. Bonbon's grin went stratospheric. She turned to Vinyl, winking, winking while still managing to maintain the impossibly wide muzzle-stretching caused by her gleeful smile. Gotcha. Again, I say, Damn! Oh my god! What the heck? Oh, what the heck? Dang. <laughs> She's a clever pony, you can see. This is uh, the first comment. Luce Fudu or something, something like that. This is beautiful. Yes, it is. Well, that was that. Another two chapters done in half an hour. And this is the day before school starts. It's 9 o'clock now. You have to wake up.
freaking early tomorrow, so I gotta get this loaded up. So thanks for listening, everybody. Until next reading. <laughs>